The Arapaho people have an undeniable historic presence in Colorado. According to the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851, the Arapaho occupied a territory that stretched from the Rockies to the plains of Nebraska and Kansas. Only 10 years later, the Fort Wise Treaty of 1861 confined these semi-nomadic people to the much smaller Sand Creek Reservation, and then another reservation. And by 1878, the Arapaho had been removed from Colorado entirely. Hi, I'm Chloe, and I want to talk to you about the Arapaho more specifically about Arapaho history and prehistory and about the groups that spent time in what is now the state of Colorado. Exploring the history of any indigenous group must be done with sensitivity. Native Americans have been through great changes since first contact with Europeans. Anglo invaders were not exactly considerate of indigenous groups when they arrived in the new world. However, the complexity of this topic is just the reason that it needs to be talked about. Indigenous groups in North America have largely been left out of history books and greater public awareness. The history of the Arapaho specifically is expansive and could be the topic of several films or books. I'm gonna use the short time that I have to explain the basics. Prior to the removal of native peoples from their homelands in the 1840s, the Arapaho were a nomadic people that often returned to the same location seasonally. Men were primarily tasked with hunting, and the women were responsible for the shelter and meal preparation. The Arapaho believed in an animistic universe and had a strong kinship with nature. Arapaho culture took into consideration the importance of the four seasons, solar movements, and the power of thoughts. For example, it was believed that speaking about things like illness or pregnancy could cause them to happen. Another part of Arapaho culture that certainly preceded the arrival of any European invasion is music and dance. It was previously suspected that all indigenous music was alike. However, scholars have found out that there are absolute differences between musical styles of Native American tribes. Arapaho musical culture is especially interesting. Religious experience and ritual were governed by music. Social dancing was an important part of life and war songs and dances were essential before and after any actions made by a war party. Aspects of indigenous life as simple as the importance of music provide a snapshot into the intricacies of Arapaho culture. Traditional Arapaho culture was disrupted when traffic from the Oregon and Santa Fe trails affected the migration patterns of buffalo. Westward expansion quickly became unavoidable. Parts of traditional Arapaho culture prevailed, but European influences were now a part of life for indigenous people. In the early 1800s, southern bands of the Arapaho congregated in southern Colorado, while northern Arapaho bands existed just west of modern towns like Fort Collins and Boulder. Northern Arapaho elders, who now live on the Wind River Reservation, say they still regard those parts of northern Colorado as their spiritual and historic homeland. Eventually, an effort was made to reach out to Arapaho natives concerning their memories of the mountains. And in 1914, Arapaho elders Gunn Griswold and Sherman Sage, with Tom Crispin acting as an interpreter, were led on a pack trip through what is now Rocky Mountain National Park. A man named Oliver Toll recorded their observations and eventually produced a book. Besides oral traditions, this is the main source we have for the Arapaho in Colorado. The elders shared what they could remember about the area, especially names of places and events. The Arapaho elders recounted some pretty amazing battles and also some pretty unbelievable hunting stories. In one story, explaining how his father, Old Man Gunn, used to hunt bears, Gunn Griswold says, quote, he used to dab himself all over with mud and lie down in the bear trail. A bear would come along and not know what to make of him. Turn him over with his paw, feel his heart and his mouth. 
All at once, Gun would spring up and give a terrible yell. The bear would jump back so quickly that he would break his back. End quote. In another instance, the elders showed where a battle had taken place. They explained that an Apache war party of around 50 was met by the Arapaho in what is now Rocky Mountain National Park. One of the elders spotted a pile of stone, an Indian monument. It had marked the beginning of the battle where the first warrior was killed. Despite Anglo invasion and all the trials that they faced, the Arapaho continue to be a strong people with an important history. Because of oral traditions that have been passed through generations, we are able to further understand this indigenous culture. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of the Arapaho and the importance of oral histories and cultural traditions. Thanks for listening. Yo we oh hey yo we